Good morning and welcome to another Hope Daily. Uh, today is uh, Monday and, and whether you're going to be watching this live or, or watching this back later on, I hope you're going to have a great day. I, I hope and pray that you're going to have an awesome week uh, and just know God's love uh, and know God's uh, blessing. Um, as we're kind of just working through the book of Romans, uh, we uh, are in chapter 3 today. We're finishing off the second part of chapter 3. Uh, Skylar started this chapter off for us uh, on Friday, um, where really he was kind of just mainly talking about, um, you know, the, uh, the impact of the law on our lives and how the law stands as like a, an accuser in our life, it, you know, showing us that, um, you know, that we've all fallen short. Um, in that, you know, and that, um, that no one is righteous. You know, at the, at the end of that passage, you know, Romans chapter three, verse twenty, it says, "Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law; rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin." So, what we can see is that in Scripture, one of the main purposes of the law, the Old Testament law, you know, God's law in general, is not actually to make people righteous. It was actually to 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 prove our our sinfulness. It's like God is proving a point to humanity. He's saying, "Hey, you can't do this by yourselves. You know, you, you cannot approach me by your own merit, by your own righteousness. Uh, I'm going to give you a law, and you're all going to fail the test. Uh, and the test proves that you need another way. And so that's why I've entitled today's vlog that uh, you know there is another way, which is uh, detailed in this passage. So I'm just going to quickly pray. Uh, let me know if you're going to be watching and following along. And then let's get into this together and let's just be encouraged as we just uh, seek God's word together. So, yeah, dear Lord, I just pray, Lord, God, as we enter into your word, God, I pray, God, would you just still our minds, God, would you open our hearts, God, would you make us sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we might fully um, embrace and absorb all the truth in your scripture, and Lord, that you might um, give us knowledge and insight and discernment. Uh, and understanding uh, is to what is to the truth, um, Lord, that we might hold on to that uh, boldly and with great assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So it says in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, uh, But now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. So, so Paul's been saying, hey, you know, the, 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 the law was put in place to, to prove that you're a sinner, to prove that you can't do it. But hey, now another way, um, another way has been opened up. And, you know, a righteousness from God apart from the law, a different way, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. And that's basically saying that the law and the prophets, um, so if you think about like the Old Testament law, so like um, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, they're, they're sort of like the books of law um, contained the law of the Old Testament. And then the prophets were, were, were God's messengers in the Old Testament. They're like Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, Daniel, um, you know, lots of the other prophets and, and, and many others. Um, both both the law and the prophets testified to uh, you know this righteousness through faith. Ultimately, Jesus Christ. They were two great signposts which effectively pointed the way to Jesus. So they didn't they, they didn't claim a righteousness of their own. The law you know proves that we are sinners and that we need a savior and the and the, and the prophets just constantly and um, you know pointed out the failure of, of god's people and said hey you, you know um, a savior is coming a messiah is coming so these are like two great big signposts they were testifying to a righteousness through faith that would come through jesus christ the other way you know the greater way and um, the the better way uh, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, the effect of our sinful nature is that we, 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 we cannot attain the holiness. We cannot attain the goodness, the perfection um, of God is that we have all fallen short. We have all flunked out. We've all gotten an F on God's uh, holiness exam, uh, on God's righteousness, um, you know, uh, dissertation. And, you know, I worry. Out, you know, like th th there's nobody that can get in. We've all fallen short, uh, and the law, um, you know, we cannot have our own merit, you know, uh, achieve righteousness through the law, and you know, there has to be uh, another way. And I don't know if any of you have seen the the the, the, the kids movie Frozen, um, which I think is probably overplayed, and the song is very much overplayed in Frozen. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's a really funny bit in Frozen where um, you know the gang are, are trying to get to. I think Elsa is, is she like the ice queen? Um, you know they're trying to get to Elsa and they're trying to climb up this like steep rocky icy cliff and they and they keep falling off. Uh, and then Olaf, this like funny snowman, 
it says uh, Sven um, I don't know if this helps but I've just found a staircase that leads exactly to where we need to go <laughs> you know you're kind of saying that like that they're trying to climb up this icy rocky cliff and keep falling down and, and then and then Olaf the snowman is like hey I've just found a staircase which leads to exactly where we need to go but I don't know if that helps <laughs> it's quite a funny moment well in my mind anyway um, but that's that, that's in in some ways in a very very small way um, kind of like the gospel uh, versus the law is that the law is like that icy rocky cliff that you know we're all going to fall short we you know we, we can't get up there out of our own merit it's just impossible it's an impossible task and it proves the point to us it proves the point that we cannot um ascribe to god's righteousness uh, but there is another way there is another way that's been built for us that's been prepared for us there's a staircase leading up to heaven uh, there's a staircase leading up to god's righteousness and um, but it's not our own staircase and that and that we we we, we we, we we walk it because someone else has built it and that's through Jesus Christ and there is another way on which we need to be uh, we, which you know we're so grateful for which we're so happy for because God provided a way for humanity um, yeah and so um, there is no difference for all of sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus um, so it's just you know it's just by him God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood and um, so that that can also mean propitiation so God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement or a, a sacrifice of propitiation what that basically means is that God's wrath God's anger uh, God's justice has been roused up because of our sin there is a penalty to pay uh, God dislikes our sin uh, God is angry with, with with the sin of humanity and I know that's not a tasteful message to hear but it's true and um, you know that like God's wrath has been has been revealed that's what it says in Romans chapter 1 the wrath of God has been revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men um, and you know and there is a price to pay and, and the way that this other way has been opened up is that that price has been paid and so um, Christ gave himself as a sacrifice of atonement or propitiation and propitiation means to means to cover up or to to turn aside God's wrath it means it's kind of like quenched God's wrath it's paid the price and so now God's like okay justice has been done uh, Jesus has paid the price my wrath has been quenched you know my my my, my you know justice has been done uh, and so now my, my wrath is turned aside so now I can approach humanity um you know with, uh, with 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 right relationship that's what that's what propitiation means that's what atonement means a sacrifice of atonement is what brings uh, oneness between hu uh, humanity uh, and God again and now that's not not often in a message that's preached um you know um in, in great detail because um we don't like to think about god's wrath and god's anger you know it's a, it's a hard message to hear sometimes uh, but, but, that, but that's the reality of the cross is that um god's god's wrath and anger was met with his love and with his mercy um he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished he did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in jesus so he demonstrated his justice on the cross that you know the justice of god uh, was what you know what was revealed and was dealt with his justice met his grace uh, where then is boasting it is excluded you know you, I, you have nothing to boast in you know this staircase leading up to God's righteousness you did not build that staircase um, you know uh, that it has been revealed to you it's been it's been built built for you and you just walk in the footsteps of Christ Jesus uh, on what principle on that of observing the law no but on that of faith for we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law so it's this other way so you know, like the law proves a point but it's just it's no good to us anymore it doesn't it doesn't do us anything um, in terms of attaining righteousness it proves a point that we're sinners but we now have a righteousness through another way um for is god the god of jews only is he not the god of gentiles too yes of gentiles too since there is only one god who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith do we then nullify the law by this faith not at all we uphold the law what paul is saying is he's saying hey um you know some might pe some people might still think hey the jews who had the law they can still you know they were expert rock climbers and they and they could they could get up that wall they could get up that icy wall in frozen and that, and that they could attain righteousness through the law and then everyone else who didn't have the law they could they could have this other way 
Uh, not so. No one, no, no one got to the top. Everyone, everyone flunked out. Everyone failed. Everyone fell on their butt. You know, and it was it, it was horrible. Um, you know, he's saying, hey, no, it's and um, you know, faith is the way through it all. You know, and there's, and there's no difference between all whether you're Jew or Gentile, um, Greek or Israelite. It, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we all have to be justified through faith through this other way. And so that, and finally, he says, well, you know, so what do we do with the law now? Do we just throw it out? Do we nullify it? Do we just say it's just disregarded? Um, no, we uphold the law because it proves the point. That's why Jesus says, Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it because, you know, the law said man is guilty. And Jesus says, I have another way. Um, and that's through faith, that's through grace, that's through God's mercy. So we just thank God that there is another way. We just thank God that he provided another way for humanity when there was no way. Um, you know, and, and we can be reminded of that in, in the bleakest of our days, in the darkest of our moments, in the depth of our sin, when we feel ashamed uh, of all of our guilt, and we feel ashamed of all of our mistakes and how much we've messed it up in life. We're just thankful that God has provided another way and it's nothing to do with our merit. It's nothing to do with our strength. It's nothing to do with our wisdom. It's this it's this other way that he has provided um, that it's just by his grace. It's a gift of salvation. Um, and we are just to, you know, receive it thankfully and just give glory and honour and praise to God. So hopefully that's been an encouragement to you guys this morning. Um, Romans is an, an awesome book. I hope you're enjoying reading through it. Um, it's so theologically dense, but it's just awesome, isn't it? So uh, somebody will be with you tomorrow for this next passage. But have, you, have an awesome day and just be reminded that God provided another way when there was no way. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.